Welcome to Contact. We're so glad you're with us today. We're in a series that we do not have titles for the different sessions that we're doing. We're just calling it a prophetic season. Um, we're very excited about uh, what God is showing us that's coming on the earth. Right. And we want you to be just as excited and we want you to be just as informed. You know, it's relevant to you today. Every day is an adventure with God. Right. And uh, so that's so the, the exciting So the intention point. is, is to show you enough of this from the scriptures so that you can actually join in and be a part. And you can also say, well, you know, I want my life to be like that. And so if you say it, you can have it. Yeah, and we want you to be informed. You know, it's like uh, the Heavenly News Channel. So uh, that's why we're calling it a prophetic season. <laughs> Stick with us. We'll be right back. Passover is a time of true celebration. Jesus successfully overcame the kingdom of darkness and has given that victory to us. Faith Landmarks Ministries invites you to come celebrate in this victory on Resurrection Sunday, April 9th at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Join in on a time of celebratory worship, special music, an empowering message, and incredible activities the whole family can enjoy. Don't forget to mark your calendars this April 9th for Passover 2023, the Kingdom of Heaven, 8491 Chamberlain Road, Richmond, Virginia. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Come worship, receive, and fellowship with us every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Want to find out more about us? Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. We look forward to seeing you here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. Welcome back. Really glad that you're with us today. This is the opening up of a series. Uh, we're calling it a prophetic season, uh, which means that, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about a timetable or, or a period that has been identified by God. And we're using prophetic uh, statements that he made uh, to identify this time. And, and we talked about, you know, first of all, the part that we're in right now uh, is called and was dubbed by uh, Joel the prophet. It's called the end times. And Peter on the day of Pentecost the days. Uh, took mm -hmm. the prophecy and applied it to their day. That's and right. said, Th this is that right. which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Right. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're, we're going to be covering today. Right. I'm very excited so about. Here's a little bit more about prophecy. Book of Revelation uh, says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Wow. So as a believer, you know, if you've ever told anybody about Jesus, uh, when you started talking, you got into a prophetic flow. Good possibility you uh, found something driving your speech. Uh, I call it the silver tongue orator. You began saying things sometimes that you didn't even know at the time but it just flowed right out of you. That, that is a prophetic utterance. That's what that is. And it, and it took hold of the situation and your testimony uh, had power in the lives of whoever it was that was listening to you talk. So let's talk about that for a minute. It's very, uh, you know, prompting me to say to you watching today, can you remember when you receive Jesus as your savior, because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So, you know, a person who's born again, saved, yeah. what, however you want to say it, right. has a remembrance of who they used to be. Something happened. And now yeah. you're someone else. Now, people who are just churchgoers and started going to church when they were babies and have been going to church their whole life, who say they're Christians, but they've never had a personal relationship with Jesus. They've never uh, said, you know, surrendered 
and say, you know, gee, I need you to be my personal Lord. I need to ask you to forgive me of my sin because we all have sinned. We all born with that nature and we have to receive Jesus. That's the whole purpose of Calvary. So, but you should be able to say what Jesus did for you. You should have a testimony. You should know the difference. You should know what you used to be like and now what your life is like since you became a Christian, since you asked Jesus into your heart. Right. There should be a change. You should know about it. You should be able to say, well, I used to run around the bars and pick up girls or pick up men. Right. You know, I used to go to the gambling place. I right. used to, I don't do any of that anymore because something changed. Jesus changed my life, yeah. you know, and when that's, And when he was talking about it, see, when he was explaining it to Nicodemus, it was like an event. That yes, took place. it's an event. Yeah, it, it just you don't you don't morphosize no. into a Christian. No. You're born again, just like you're born a baby. You are literally born again when you the moment you accept Jesus as your personal savior. So that's what we mean when we talk about telling someone what Jesus did for you. If you can't tell someone what Jesus did for you, then you need to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and examine your walk with the Lord. Your walk, your relationship. Are you actually saved? Or are, you are you saved? Are you just going to church? That's really important. And I've talked to a lot of people who were preachers, kids yeah. who grew up, grew up in church, several generations. And, and, you know, and they think just because they went to church that they're a Christian. Yeah. And no, every person on this earth will stand alone before the throne of God as an individual responsible for the gifts and callings that God placed on you as an individual. Did you have a relationship with God? Did you pursue what he uh, has for your life, your purpose, your destiny? And we'll go on throughout eternity. Right. It's not just here. So one of the things that uh, God gave us to begin doing in uh, during the pandemic time in our church services is we discovered that there were a whole lot of people who had a heart after God and they would come to the church building. Right. Okay? Uh, but uh, they they didn't know anything about being saved. So uh, we, we simply took this very thing that I'm about to read to you. We took it and, and said, well, you know, first of all, you wouldn't even be here if you didn't already have faith. So you believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. This is part of the picture. Right. You have to believe in your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead. And then you have to confess him as Lord. Right. And that's and, and then you're saved. You'll get so saved. I'm reminded of a story from my young days, okay. um, I was dating a, a brother in, in our fellowship, you knew him, okay. and he went to every Bible study and church service that there was to have. Okay. And at that time, um, there was a movie, Time to Run, that was coming to the theaters. It was put out and, by the Billy Graham was, Evangelistic Association. Yeah, and so they had training meetings to uh, train everybody on how to win people to Christ. Yeah. So in other words, the, the plan was that the theater would be filled with the people who were trained on how to lead someone in a prayer of faith to receive Jesus as their savior. Then, uh, so they would show the movie and then they would give an altar call and invite people to come forward who wanted to give their life to Christ. Right. So this young guy that I was dating at the time, who I thought was, you know, a, just a pillar of Christianity, you know, uh, you know, and so, and I'm a brand new baby Christian. I mean, I hadn't been saved more than three or four months, but I knew what Jesus had done for me, you know, and, and, and we were trained about how to lead people to receive Jesus as their savior. So I, I, you know, I had two people that I had, that I led to Christ. I was so excited, you know? <laughs> so I went to talk to him afterwards and I said, you know, what happened to you? And he, he was crying. He was just, Ooh. he said, he didn't even know if he was saved. Cause he said he didn't know how 
to tell them about how to ask Jesus into their heart. He didn't even know. Yeah. And I was shocked and I broke up with him. <laughs> <laughs> right after that is when, uh, well, we were already in the Bible stu school, to, uh, Bible study together. Yeah, well, I tried to explain it to him, but I thought, wow, you know, this is not the person I want to team up with the rest of my life with. If he doesn't even know how to lead someone to Jesus, you know, let right. alone, you know, if it, you know, I don't, you know, I don't feel strong myself. Right. And so I certainly don't want to be the leader in this relationship. Yeah. You know, and so, so, you know, just back to the same principle, it's, 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 a, it's a, a moment in time. It's as distinct as a birth of a baby. When they come out, they're born. It's, it, here, here's Johnny. Here's Susie. They're born. It's not just a news. No, and it's not just a wonder what it is. Yeah. Either. An, an ame ame amoeba that crawled out of a puddle. A binary. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what it is. No, there's never been a baby born where the doctor didn't know what it was. Right. Okay. So anyway, off, off of that right. subject. <laughs> so he, here's another, uh, let me read this one to you. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Yeah, this is so exciting. It says, and we having the same spirit of faith, I've already got it, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Uh, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, th this whole thing that we're going through here, we're going to talk about the circumstances that are coming on the earth, but we're also going to emphasize the promises. And it, it just seems to me that the church has, has uh, focused on the negative that's coming on the world and are unable to actually call down by faith what belongs to them in Christ. Yeah, when you can get so caught up in details yeah. and the way, you know, questions right. that you never just receive the actual truth as a newborn babe. Right. And so that's why, you know, people can't explain what Jesus did for them. Right. It's as simple as so that. So the promises of God are very succinct and very exact. Exactly. And if you believe it and say it, you'll have you'll it. Have it. You'll have it. <laughs> it's that simple. That's right. Yeah. Now, you know, there, there comes a test of your faith, which uh, our friend Creflo Dollar shared uh, at our camp meeting this past, and, and it's, it, that was really an excellent Yeah, the statement. trial of our faith. The trial of our faith. Is so just if you have faith, it's going to be tried, mm -hmm. but that doesn't have anything to do with the promise. Yeah, it's just like a woman that's pregnant. Yeah. You know, it, you know you're going to have a baby, but you're going to have to wait. It's nine months, Yeah, you know, it, and are you sure you're going to have a baby? Yes, I'm sure. Well, it's just not time yet, <laughs> you know, and so that's the thing with God's plan, purpose, and will. We have to, if he promised it, mm -hmm. if he said it was going to happen, then it's going to, I'm reminded of another uh, important prophetic event in the Bible. Uh -huh. It was the prophetess Anna. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Who was a widow. Um, her husband died after seven years of marriage, and she'd been like over 80 years in the temple because the Lord promised her that she would see the Messiah before she died. Mm -hmm. So she spent her entire life in that prophetic flow. In that pro prophetic flow in the temple, and what if she had just not gone to the synagogue that day? Right. When the day that, that Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the synagogue to be dedicated, and when they came in with Jesus, she held him in her hands and knew this for her whole life was for that moment for when he would be put in her hands and she would hold the savior of the world in her hands and be able to say, this is, this is him. Yeah. Her whole life. Yeah. Can you imagine people today, would they be willing to stand the test right. of time? She was there the e trial every day, of all, their faith. all day, continuously, it says. She was continuously in the temple. That's right. Yeah. That's right.
And so, you know, I say that to church people today, you know, where are you? You know, get back in church, get back worshiping God, get back using your faith and adding your faith to what God's doing in the earth today, right. in your city, wherever you are, become an active contributing part of what God is doing in these days, in these last days with the church. Make sure that your lamp is filled with oil and that it's trimmed and that you're ready to go. Right. And you're, that's not going to happen if you just casually flip on a stream of a, sh of, a, of a church service and watch 10 minutes and then get a phone call and call that being an active member of and, the body. And flip from service to service. Yeah, I have too many reference points, you know. Right. You've got to become an integral part of a body right. somewhere and become a member in particular. Connected yeah. with a life flow that yeah. the life is flowing to you and through you to others as yeah. well. And your purpose is being worked out as you see yourself acting out the things that are written in the Word of God. I like that verse. We having, having the, the same, same spirit. spirit of faith. So I went back and looked about what's he talking about? Okay. The same spirit of faith. So he's talking about we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Yeah. We're not walking in craftiness, trying to manipulate people. Not handling the word of God uh, deceitfully, deceitfully oh. but manifestations of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We're doing everything we're doing right out here in the open. And so all these things were shining a light of the gospel of Christ. So that's what he's talking about. The same spirit of faith is a continuation of this is this is who I am. This is my life. And this, this is what I believe. And, we, you know, yeah. it's like, watch me. This is what I'm doing. Right. This is this is it. So, Same spirit of faith. Uh, is, so if we're going to do that, if we're going to believe what the word says and then we're going to say it. So I want to read this part again uh, to everyone out mm -hmm. of the book of Acts, chapter two. I'm going to break into the middle of verse 17. Uh, he, he says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy mm -hmm. and your young men shall see visions. Now, you know, when, when I first got saved, my early walk with the Lord was, was identified by visions. And I, and I would go and share my visions with people and it was so shocking and rattling mm -hmm. to them, you know, that it, that it, it actually formed part of my testimony. Right. Okay, so in other words, it should not be a strange thing because this has been going on for 2,000 years. Right. It should not be a strange thing for a young person to have visions. That's right. Yeah, and, and older people should not cast doubt on their visions, you know, because it's for them. Well, just the testimony of praying over your food in a restaurant, mm -hmm. I mean, that shakes people up. It does. You know, so, I mean, it could be as simple as just bowing your head at the table in a yeah. public place. Right. And everybody's like, I'll never forget when we had the, a marriage retreat. Okay. Well, it wasn't a, ma a retreat. It was a dinner. Okay. It was just a fellowship dinner. And we went to some restaurant locally. Okay. And uh, we're just so used to just, you know, this is the way we live. It's just the second nature. Yes. We were in this restaurant and it was half of the people were from our church. Right. The other half of the people were just people who came there to eat dinner. Yeah. And so uh, we said, well, let's pray over the food. And you stood up. You said, well, let's thank God for our food. And, and, and all of our people bowed their head and we looked and everybody else in the restaurant, they all, <laughs> they all, and they might have been in the middle of eating their chicken, you know, they just bowed their head because it just took over. I remember that. The restaurant. Yeah. It did. You know, and it's like, and nobody threw rocks at us or no. got mad or, yeah. you know, were. They were glad somebody took charge of the situation. It was was just a, a yeah. natural thing for well, us. So more and more of that is coming. See, that's what this prophecy is is about. More and more of that is coming on the earth. Mm -hmm. And so and so instead of uh, assuming that nobody out there wants to be touched by God, what we ought to do is go over on the other side and say, okay, well, he said 
he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Right. So let's let's participate in that. Right. Like we should be known as, uh oh, here come the people who've turned the world upside down. Yeah. You know, like when they show up, everything changes. Everything <laughs> is, you know, everything's in upside down and disarray and people are thrown off their groove, so to speak, you right. know, and then yeah. they have to make a decision. Right. And then they can either criticize or uh, whatever they do today. I mean, I don't know that some people get really irate about their space and, yeah. you know, uh, hate, they might call it a hate speech to yeah. pray over your food or something. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Yeah. It's just gone. It's gone wrong. And so it's time for the body of Christ to make a difference, to, yeah. to come out, to come be out from bold. among them and touch not the unclean things, saith the spirit of the Lord. And I will receive you as sons and as daughters, yeah. saith God. So if unrighteous things can come out of the closet and parade up and down the street, why can't Christians come out and say, That's I amazing. love Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like to praise the Lord. Right. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I pray for you? I heard you saying you were feeling bad. Do you mind if I pray for you? I mean, wow, why not? Yeah. Because the world doesn't mind putting, dumping something on you for. They do. Uh, Every you know, time you turn around, they're they're doing that. Eating a, a chicken or something, you right. know. So here, here's another verse. Uh, on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out. In, is, so the, those are considered people that you would, ex, you would not expect to be included. Uh, th that's the terminology that they used on purpose to indicate that these were just, you know, like... Uh, low-level workers or something of that nature? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. On, on my servants and on my hand, handmaidens, handmaidens, servants I will pour and handmaidens. Out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So wow. instead of thinking that it's only people that are called into the, the office preachers. of the prophet, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be everybody. Yeah, it's going to be the, the, the guy that works at the gas station, yeah. you know, behind the counter. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, yeah. the people that are cleaning your car at the car wash. Wow. Can you imagine? Yeah. Servants and handmaidens. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to start taking advantage. I'm just thinking about all these times that I'm out in public and, yeah. and, and you know, and I realize, well, the, you know, for some reason they're, they're acting as though I'm different from everybody else in the room. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and take advantage take of Take advantage of the time that the attention, the, yeah. the moment. Take yeah. advantage. Yeah. I mean, if, if you think it's different with me, it's because of him. It's not me. Exactly. Yeah, so these are exciting times. His spirit. And wh that's what we said in the beginning is yeah. we want you to understand that we're talking about exciting things, good things. So many times people, when they think about the end of the world or end times or last days, it, believe me. It's it all will, doom and gloom when it comes out of some people. It will be cataclysmic, but it's not cataclysmic for people who are partnering with God right. to to bring this message to the world. And then when it's time to leave, we're just going to leave on the express yeah you know and the church has focused on the negative far too long and left uh christians with the impression that the negative was for you right you know and it's not for you it's not for you and there's a, there's another whole part of it yeah and and so w this is just uh one of our our second message so we've got more to come and another message to share with you in just a minute so we'll be right back Since its start, Rebuild America has been impacting our nation with the love of Christ and aiding families in need. From Detroit to Puerto Rico, Norfolk, and right here in Richmond, Rebuild has served countless people and led many into the kingdom of God. Through your faithful support into missions, we are able to keep these outreaches going and our area of reach expanding, serving more and more people every year. It takes a big team to impact our nation. Your monetary and physical support has always blessed the needs of families and the body of Christ. As we look towards this summer, we are planning for multiple community days. This provides a wonderful opportunity to bring the Word of God back into neighborhoods 
previously closed off due to COVID. There is a great need in our city, and you can be a major help in fulfilling that need. We encourage you to go to rebuildamerica.tv to stay up to date on the latest ways you can be a part of making our nation a better place. Invest into missions and rebuild America today. The seed you sow now will return an abundant harvest of souls to your credit in the months to come. Join in on the Jubilee with your entire family as we glorify our Heavenly Father through music, the Word, and activities everyone can enjoy at this year's Passover 2023, The Kingdom of Heaven, April 9th at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Providing exceptional academic learning, Faith Landmarks Academy is an exciting educational opportunity for the members of Faith Landmarks Ministries. With classes available for students from K-5 to the 12th grade, FLA is an affordable Christian school alternative to public education, providing personalized tutoring that supports each student's unique way of learning. Open enrollment is going on now. Applications are available online at faithlandmarks.org FLA. For more information, contact the school office at 804-262-8256. We look forward to providing your child the knowledge and skill sets to excel in every area of their life. This is uh, getting palpable in this studio. And so I, I want to say to you two things, essentially, is that you're certainly welcome to come back uh, next week, same time, same place, uh, however you found us. Uh, for the, the third part of this, this is actually number two. Uh, but you can also uh, go in on our website or on our YouTube channel and get the entire series, which has become very popular uh, lately, you know, what people do, they call it binge watching. So they'll sit down and watch all four episodes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to say something to those of you who may not be able to say what Jesus did for you. If you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior right now, I just want you to follow me in this prayer. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the Son of God. I want a relationship with you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my heart to change my life. And from this moment forward, I'm going to call myself a Christian. And I look forward to my walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's just that simple. Yeah. That's now, your... if, if you did that, you can uh, report back to us. We'll be glad to help you with uh, discipleship, teaching you how to walk in all of this. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you back next time.